Eastern Illinois head coach Chris Wilkerson. Uh, his team is coming off a 35 to 28 loss at Southeast Missouri. Uh, this week, EIU hosts Bryant in a Big South uh, OVC matchup. Uh, coach, some thoughts on your team, and then uh, we'll get some questions. Yeah, thanks, Jose, for having us. Um, just, you know, proud of the efforts again of the guys. Um, certainly did a lot of the things that we talked about doing to try to be successful in the football game, but didn't do enough of them. And so came up short against a very good Southeast Missouri State team on the road. Um, and, um, you know, just unfortunately still not good enough in our conversion downs, third and fourth down situations. Um, still gave up too many sacks and, and too many penalties as a football team to win against a, a quality opponent on the road. So um, I'm proud of our progress as a team, but um, now certainly our entire focus is moving on towards this week and an opportunity to play at home against a very well-coached Bryant team um, at home. Hey, uh, Dan, any questions? Sure, I'm ready. Um, so for the first time this year, you know, you've got two straight losses. So, you know, each each year is different, of course, and certainly you've dealt with adversity in, in the past. But, you know, how is the team kind of handling this adversity, if you call it that? Oh, it's been a, it's been a resilient group of guys. Um, they're still very focused. Uh, you know, they understand that we've been very, very, very close. They know that we're very improved, um, and they know that there's still a lot of work to be done. And so... Um, I, I was pleased with the way that they responded. You know, we talk about reaction versus response a lot. Um, and our, our collective response has been very good. Coaches, support staff, and our players. And so it started Sunday with, hey, tell the truth Sunday and owning what we did well and what we didn't and where we go from here. And um, certainly progressed into yesterday where they have, you know, some voluntary things that they kind of do on their own. Um, I saw a lot of guys around the building on their own. And, and then certainly they've been in the weight room and, got some great work today and I'm looking forward to getting on the field this afternoon. So I have no question that this group um, as close as they have been and as resilient as they have been and the things that they've had to overcome to this point that we will respond um, very well. So I'm excited about the opportunity just to get back out there with our football team. I know, you know, coach Merritt, you know, from your playing days at Eastern when he spent two years there as an assistant or coach Spoo, you know, what do you, what do you remember about him? Yeah, no, um, coach was, you know, fresh out of school. He, he had played at Indiana University for Bill Mallory. And um, I remember him coming here and he had a lot of energy and enthusiasm. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, this profession is, is very much like a fraternity. And so we stayed in touch through the years. Um, certainly he went off overseas and coached in Germany and, and in Europe and then came back to the States. And while he was a very successful high school coach down in Miami, um, I recruited his school at all the different stops that I was at. Um, so we continue to stay in touch there. And he's done a phenomenal job at Bryant. Um, you know, it, it's it's come a long way. They're a very, very well-coached team. Um, they are a senior-laden team. So last week, as we prepared for SEMO, I, I made the comment that they were the oldest football team that we had played to date. And obviously, I don't look at the rosters until we get closer to playing, guys. But it's amazing. In this day and age right now, with the state of college football, um, that Bryant has 19 senior starters um, and I think that's a credit to to their university and to their coaching staff and to the culture that they've created to have that many guys, um, you know, they're, they're kicker and punter, but then 17 on offense and defense. And so they are a very, very veteran football team and they've been able to keep and, and attract and retain and develop guys over time. So um, they, they played really well, um, certainly in different spots this year, they've had a lot of, you know, inclement weather games, um, but they're coming off a season high 43 points and their quarterback is the real deal. Kid can distribute the football. He's got a great arm. He can throw it short, intermediate, and deep all over the place. He's got weapons all over the place, and and he's very, very capable with his feet. So we've got our hands full, but I know they're going to be a very well-coached team. I know you've got film, but is it more difficult to uh, get ready for a team from a different part of the country? No, I, I don't think so. Um, You know, again, you trade all the videotape, and, and so you have a chance to um, – you know, um, watch, watch everything that you want to watch all the offensive, defensive, special teams, and you cut it up however you do. And, and uh, you analyze things and, and um, you know, when it's all said and done um, it, it's still, they may be from Rhode Island and, and coming to Charleston, Illinois, but uh, it, it's, it's just another football team um, whether they happen to be from uh, you know, Terre Haute or, or they happen to be from uh, Rhode Island. Um, so we just are going to focus again on our preparation and, and um, trying to do some of the things that we need to do to be successful. I know last week in the post game, you said that you had set a goal for the offensive scoring in the thirties. Um, was that something unique to that game or is that something you do every week? No, I mean, you go into every game and you want to score as many points as possible. And I knew that we hadn't really scored the ball as much as we'd like to offensively this season. Um, 
you know, but our defense has kept us in football games and, and done a phenomenal job taking the football away and, and giving up some first downs in between the twenties, but buckling down in the red zone and, and, um, or getting takeaways. And so, you know, again, the biggest part of our formula for our improvement is, is taking the football away and taking care of the football and having no balls on the ground. So turnover margin is something that we prided ourselves on, um, you know, from the end of the last game last season, that being said, I knew that our defense was going to have their hands full last week with that offense. Um, I knew that they were very, very capable. They hadn't really had all their pieces together. Um, you know, Flournoy had been injured a little bit during the course of the season. And, and um, I knew that while he was still playing with something on his hand that he was going to play. And I knew the quarterback was healthy. I knew Gino was healthy. I knew their offensive line was healthy. And so I knew that those guys were going to have a, um, a challenge. Um, and we were kind of, you know, right on path to do what we wanted to do. And, and um, you know, we got another takeaway in the second half and, and came away empty, you know, ended up unsuccessful on fourth down. Um, and then obviously they scored and they went up two scores at some point. We battled right back and, and got it within one. And, and, and then um, their four minute offense, you know, kind of took the air out of our sails, but we got the ball back with a chance. And, you know, like I said, we're driving and just, you know, ran out of time and, and, um, and space. So um, again, tip of the hat to those guys, but no, it was a, that, that week, I figured their offense was extremely successful. Um, and I knew that, you know, offensively we had talked about it. Hey, we needed to be aggressive. We needed to make sure we finished our drives we've left points on the board a lot this season, early in the season. And we know that that can't continue. So, um, you know, we just want to improve every week. Yeah. One more for you. Um, I noticed uh, Terrence Gibson on the sideline in uniform last week, and I know he's been a little banged up at points, but uh, just curious on what his status is. I know you have four games left. So, you know, the yep. red shirts kind of out of the window. So. Yeah. So Terrence is a, um, a, um, a guy that uh, is a, an extremely um, gifted athlete and, and certainly was in our quarterback competition um, all through the spring and all through the fall. Um, and, and as we, you know, ended preseason camp, he was kind of, it was one A and one B with him and Pierce. And, um, you know, unfortunately he kind of tweaked his knee in one of our workouts and um, we decided to have surgery on it. So we had the surgery. He is back and healthy. He is available. Um and you may see him in, in some different roles here over the last three or four weeks. He's kind of come to us about the opportunity to play some different positions. And so um, we're working through some things this week um, and, and we'll kind of see, but he's a phenomenal athlete. Um, he's a great young man um, and a very mature individual. You know, he's played a lot of football, started his collegiate career at SMU, went to Belen and then went to East LA community college and, and certainly here uh, to Charleston. So um, you may see a little bit more of, of T Gip as we call him here in the very near future. As always, appreciate your time. Jose, I don't yeah. know if you have anything. Oh, uh, yeah, Coach, uh, one quick thing. Uh, you had mentioned about um, uh, your team playing in some tight ball games and, of course, you know, dropping the last couple of years. Um, you have one more game before you go into an off week. How, you know, how um, hungry are, are your guys to be sure that uh, they go into the break uh, on a good positive note and then uh, getting ready to come back to finish out the season strong? Oh, no, it's, it's extremely important, you know, and unfortunately, you know, we played two of the better teams, you know, at least preseason wise in the polls um, out of the shoot. Um, and so, Hey, it's just about, again, how we respond to this. And it's a great opportunity to play at home. We just want to get to one and zero to get our first conference win in the league. Um, you know, and then, yeah, it's, it's important before the break, you know, you have that bye week where you get a chance to rest a little bit. This is the, for us, the 12th straight week going all the way back to preseason. It's the longest I've ever gone in my coaching career. Um, to start a year before having a buy. So um, I know the guys are tired, but hey, everybody's tired at this point in time during the season. So um, we're just going to focus on our preparation. And, and like I said, they're very quality opponent. Their offense is outstanding. Their defense is active. Um, they're, they're built to stop the run and rush the passer. They get the leading sacker um, on one end and, and probably one of the second best pass rushers in the league on the other side. And we haven't done a very good job in pass protection. So we've got our hands full, but we're excited about the opportunity to play at home in another Big South OVC contest. Okay, Coach. Uh, Dan, any other questions? Any follow-ups on that? Or No, I'm, I'm good. I appreciate you both your times. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Coach, and uh, good luck to you this week. Thanks a million. Go Panthers.